Uh, thank you for joining with us uh, to the live stream. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and we'll get back with you. Thank you. Um, we're going over announcements. And Wednesday night, uh, the first week of school, which is about a week and a half from now, we're going to start back up our youth and young adult night. Uh, Bible studies. Um, you don't necessarily have to be youth or young adult. We, uh, we have other good teachers in here and we can branch out, but uh, that's lately been the, the audience that we, we've had. So. Uh, that will be the first week of school. We'll start Wednesday night and study back up. So, um, that being said, I'd like to get into today's message. Um, we have been going over the attributes of God in the past few messages. Last week, I got out of town, but Daryl gave an excellent message on love, which is an attribute of God. And for now, that's going to conclude what we call the communicable um, attributes of God. These are the ones that, uh, the attributes of God that we can see. And we can grow in as well. We can grow in love. We can grow in mercy. We can grow in things like that. Even holiness. We can grow in. But today we're going to start addressing the ones that we can't grow in. Because it's just not possible. The incommunicable attributes. We can talk about omnipresence. Y'all don't want a lot of me everywhere. All right? Uh, omnipotence. Not all powerful. Uh, and omniscience. Uh, all knowing. So these are the ones that, when we talk about God, they're the high and lofty ones uh, that we often uh, think about. With that being said, I want to start with saying medical technology has came a long ways. Uh, we've got two nurses, and as we're talking about medical technology, think about when y'all started y'all's career. <coughs> Technology's changed a little bit, right? Has it been for the better? Yes. I would think so. The medical technology has changed. It's been more helpful. As a matter of fact, think to the 1950s. I know Papa was about 60. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, think to the 1950s. In the 1950s, imagine being able to scan and look inside somebody's body with an MRI. They would probably call that witchcraft. All right. <laughs> the shape of DNA wasn't even found in 1953. They didn't have any idea what it looked like. And everything that came up before that was completely wrong. Doctors are now growing organs with stem cells. There's videos of it. They're actually growing hearts from barely anything. So it's crazy stuff going on with medical technology right now. Uh, doctors can alter RNA and DNA. They can change your eye color if you wanted it. A whole number of things. They could do much now, but imagine this. Or as we know, they fail all the time. Yeah, you, you know this well, Bob. New parts and act, aspects of the human body are being discovered all the time. Matter of fact, when I was in college, uh, I was studying anatomy. Turns out, halfway through my semester, they discovered another organ. They just gave me another thing to memorize. And frankly, they can do only so much. But God knows everything intimately. He is all powerful to save the body and the soul. And there is nowhere where his hand doesn't touch. So, let's start out by saying it's important to understand as we talk about the nature of God, the spiritual aspect of God. God is and can be, first of all, omnipresent because he is omnipotent. These words, uh, omni means all. And potent means powerful. God is all-powerful. He has all power to do whatever his character and his will decides needs to be done. In Hebrews 1.3, um, as you're going through the verse, it says that he is upholding all things by the word of his power. He is holding the universe in place. Matthew 19.26, Jesus said, with God, all things are Possible. Made possible by what? His power. I just misspelled power. That's all. Alright? And Job 42 2, he testifies I know that uh, thou can do all things, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. The attribute is clearly seen in the world around us, and the might of his gospel, perhaps the best example of his power. The power to raise himself from the dead. Now, Here's what I do want y'all to turn to. Romans 1.20. Romans 1.20. Uh, 
gives an excellent description of his power. Romans one twenty. I'm gonna give y'all a page on it, but I kind of cheated. Remember Romans one twenty. Romans one twenty. It says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. First of all, look outside. I know it's a little bit dismal. Got all these buildings. What do y'all see? Y'all see trees? Y'all see sky? The universe isn't falling and collapsing on us. His handiwork is seen. Being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. The work and power of God is evident in our lives. It's evident by the things that we see. It's evident that the fact that we are here today. Saying this, God would not be an all holy powerful God without the ability to be present everywhere. That's all power. Psalm 115.3 says, But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. God Sitting on his throne in heaven is in heaven. Heaven is a real place. Okay? Hell is a real place too. But God is sitting up in heaven and he is able to do whatever he wants in this earth, around our universe, all simultaneously because he is omnipresent. We serve a God who is all powerful, is able to do whatever he pleases, even from heaven. In Isaiah, it says he fills the earth. His holy messengers move at his word and his sight is limitless. Talking about these things is very lofty, but that's why they're called incommunicable. We do not share this wonderful attribute of God uh, with them. And thank God for that. Um, my descriptions will be very limited today because I'm going solely what our uh, scripture gives us. They hold no real power uh, uh, people today. We often think that we are all powerful a lot of times to control our destiny. You know, as I was making this... Um, this sermon, I thought, a prime example is government. You know, a lot of times things are taken into their own hands. They think they can do whatever, but they are all powerful. But people hold real, no real power over their lives. In a second, it could all be over. They're not always present, although they try to be. Not even with themselves, knowledge is limited. We are not all powerful beings. But the invitation is laid for us to know an omnipotent, all-powerful God, correct? I think that's an amazing truth in itself. He has all power, but still, he knows you and wants to be in relationship with you. Now, another thing that's important to understand, let's talk about the omnipotence and omnipresence of God, is the Trinity. God is three distinct persons in one. By his distinct person, God fills the heavens. He fills the earth, and he fills the soul of each person who believes. Uh, a few messages ago, I talked about how the, the holiness of God. God is so holy that he's the only person that can go to hell and still be holy. It's amazing. All-powerful, all-present. If you would, turn with me to Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23, 23. <clears throat> That is page 384. No, 385. In the yellow box. So for a little bit of context here, I uh, never want to read anything out of context. Um, Jeremiah is prophesying. God had given him a message. And he's rebuking bad leaders and prophets, once again, who essentially thought that they were all powerful. Do whatever they want. And God puts them in his place in this chapter. And as we see here, uh, Jeremiah 23, 23. It says, I am a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not, a, and not a God afar off. Can anything hide himself in the secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, saith 
the Lord. There is nothing that escapes his eyes. I know this is going to sound a little bit crude, but even if a bacteria three universes away on a planet passes gas, God's going to know about it. Okay? Let's, let's be honest here. He is all powerful. He knows everything. And the bad thing is, I can't even remember what I had for breakfast. That's the God we serve. God sees the good, the bad, the ugly, and he sees the things that we will never see, we can never imagine, and we uh, never will. Colossians 1.17 says, And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. God's omnipotent attribute allows for his omnipresence to flow, that he can be anywhere, that he can see everything, that he can do all things. But there are still people that argue against the holiness and omnipresence of God. They say with cherry-picked verses and out of context that because God, because there's evil in the world, there can't possibly be an all-powerful God. Or they also say that um, this would encroach on human freedom. If he's all-powerful, surely, surely he's going to control us like a puppet master. But the right questions are never asked. We said these are incommunicable. incommunicable. These are things that we don't share with God. So how could we possibly know what is in his mind as he moves and as he does these things? We've got to ask questions that deal with the communicable traits. What does his love do in response to this? What does his holiness say about his character? What does his mercy say? What does his wrath say? As we talk about the, and try to answer these questions that people try to slander our God with, we can only relate and answer based off the communicable traits. We know his love intimately, do we not, uh, as believers. We know his holiness. And that's the plus side of it. God is omnipotent, omnipresent, and therefore is also all knowing. He knows the best things for us constantly. All-knowing means that he knows the, uh, what's best for you and how to work all things to the good of those who love him and call it according to his purpose. Romans 8.28 And he is capable of ensuring the safety of your soul. He is all-powerful, all-present, and all-known. So, as always, I try to make it practical. What does this mean for us? No matter what you do, no matter where you go, no matter how far, you're, far you fall, whether in the hospital, whether here, uh, whether your world's falling apart, Isaiah 59 1 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not short. He has reach that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy than it cannot hear. God is in reach. God is reaching. God has reached with the Son Jesus Christ. We have separation from God, but he sent his Son. That we can have be in right relationship with him. That we can be part of his body and he can be the head of the body as we talked about today. So no matter what you do, where you go, how far you fall, God is in reach and has reached for you. Nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. Amen. Amen. Romans 8.35. Let's turn there for a second. Awesome verse. Um, if you don't feel something, read this verse, something's wrong with you. From 835 to 39. <coughs> this is a omnipotent God here. All power. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed in all days long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, that's all English for no. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, even the angels, and the power that they hold from God, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Isaiah 59.1 The Lord's hand 
is not short. He, he is capable and he has done it enough. Uh, his grace is sufficient. While we are here on earth, um, in a way, as I was reading this, I also thought, although these are incommunicable, God does some pretty amazing things at the moment of salvation. One of those things is that essentially, in a way, in a way, we can be in two places at once as well. We're here on earth, right? Look around you. We're on earth. But you go to uh, Ephesians 2, 5 through 6, and it says that we're also seated in heavenly places. Right now, we have a heavenly inheritance. We have a heavenly citizenship. He has made us alive, and we have the ability to have two residencies, two citizenships, while we're here on this earth. Isn't that amazing? He has made us alive and has, uh, has given us the ability to have these two citizenships. We have a temporal one here on earth, and we have an eternal one in heaven where God sits right now. We serve a limitless God. And the body of Christ grows in the likeness of God's communicable attributes, such as love, holiness, mercy, and grace, beautiful grace. The body of Christ grows in reverence and knowledge of him as we look to his omnipresence, to his omnipotence, and I'll spell the other one here in a minute, his all-knowingness. With that being said, let's go to the Lord's Prayer. Dear God, I thank you for this day, Father. I thank you for that I can even speak uh, to you right now, Father, and that you hear me. Um, that I can speak to a God who holds all power to do whatever he wants. He, you could play pool with our planet, Father. And I'm able to talk to you and thank you as my Father. As um, we come before you, today we all uh, thank you for who you are and your attributes. And as we continue to study your attributes, um, that we fall even more in love with you, Father, um, and that we grow in knowledge, that we grow in truth, and that the body is edified, Father, so that when we go out into this broken world, we can point to you as an all-powerful God. I thank you for everything you do, and I thank you for my church family here today. Uh, we are all one in the body of Christ, yes. and I cannot thank you uh, enough for your wonderful plan uh, of salvation and the mystery of godliness that you have uh, unveiled to us. I ask this all in the holy, precious name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Right, thank you all for being here today. Thank you for the last one. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, prayer requests, just leave them below and I'll be back with you. Thank you.